Guys, appreciate you checking out my YouTube station. Uh, this week is going is my play calling week. So each day of this week, I'll be walking through an element of helping you hopefully call a better game. It, uh, yesterday we talked about building a play sheet. You can go back and look at that video. The next couple days we'll be talking about motions and shifts. We're talking about tempo. We'll be talking about making adjustments in game. If you'd like more information on this, this all of what I am pulling comes from my system, the Gun T RPO system. I just dropped the playbook. I uh, sent out my first shipment of those the other day, so kind of excited about that. If you're interested in getting all of this stuff written down how it is, you can get that off of my website, fbcoachsimpson.com. If you've got any questions, you can reach out to me, fbcoachsimpson at gmail.com. And a lot of this stuff, if you want the video form, is available on Coach2. All right, so today we're going to talk about the goals of a script. So coming out of the gate, this is the first part of the game. You get the ball. You know, what are my goals in our system and what I would suggest you take for you as your goals? First thing, score. It's a lot easier to win when you score. So if you've seen something on film that you want to exploit, shoot your shot, man. Take a shot at it. Score. They're going to be all hyped up. Look to score. We love to go double cadence and change up the snap count a lot early also because generally demons all geeked up. And my demons coordinator laughs about it. So if somebody goes on two in the first play, we're either going to be offsides or they're going to be offsides. Somebody is. So a lot of times we'll try to take advantage of their aggression. Okay, so if you've got a gimmick or something, man, pull it out there. Why not? Okay, score. Here are the things we're trying to accomplish other than scoring points. First thing is I want to find the eyes of the defense. Where are they looking? Do I have a false key I might be able to use? Are they keying my guards? Are they keying our receivers, our tackles, headgear, our tight end and our wing? Are they going to key quarterback and backfield action? What are they looking at and what are they all looking at? So inside of our offense, we've got a lot of built-in little tags and nuances we try to do where maybe their key goes this way and the ball goes that way and you find out really, really quickly where they're looking. So we want to do that kind of stuff early on to see where their eyes are going. We love to run uh, some false influence stuff early to see what they're doing, how they're going to adjust, because it will dictate our play calls down the road. Same thing with the coverage. You know, which guys are being super aggressive, keying the backfield, which guys are droppers. You know, are there conflict players like outside linebackers committing to the run every time? Or are they kind of half and half playing it? So we know who to RPO and that kind of stuff. The next thing we look for is formation adjusts. Guys who have played me probably laugh because I run about four or five formations, maybe six formations early, and then I just get into what I like uh, because that's kind of how I am is I'm going to run formations until I like how you line up to what I'm doing. And once I figure out what you're lined up to, I'm not going to let you off the hook. I talk about this a lot of time with young offensive coordinators. You got them on the ropes and you let them off the hook. You know, you got them in a formation they're not lining up to. Don't go out of that. Get in that formation and run what you want. And in order for you to do that, you got to have built-in answers inside of your formation. I would also encourage you, this is not just for my YouTube here, but just on my own system. If you've got a formation you can't run every play out of or most plays out of, get out of that formation. Um, don't do that. Get in formation where you can run everything and it opens the game up for you. But I want to know how you're lining up to... Tight end here, trips here. Tight end, wing, and trips. Okay, how are you lining up to empty? How are you lining up to tight end away from the wing? What are you doing? And then once I find what I like, I'm going to live in that. Okay, personnel matchups. On film, you might have thought, man, 22, he ain't real good. And then you get live and you go, he might not be real good, but he's better than my 22. Okay, so you need to kind of confirm matchups. You probably knew along the front that defensive tackle is going to be a problem and he becomes a huge problem on Friday night, well, you should be confirming these in that first drive. Try something out where maybe you run the other direction and you'll figure out real quick, that's going to be a problem, so now our adjustments will have to go to. Same thing can happen in the skill positions also. So try to find the personnel matchups that are going to be problems and then, of course, you want to find the personnel matchups uh, that you can exploit and go after and try to confirm those. 
And then technique changes. You know, we see teams because of our offense that look completely different. And, you know, they line up different, they play different, they move guys different places. But what we're really looking for is an overall technique. You know, when you're coming against us, are you blowing and going and getting upfield, trying to attack and penetrate and blitz? Or are you reading, okay, and anchoring down? And once we know that, then we kind of know how we're going to make our adjustments in our blocking schemes and plays that we like against certain looks, okay? So that's what you're looking for in a script. I want to score touchdowns, but I also want to gain as much information from the opponent as I can. So using multiple formations, running some false keys, or running some play action, or some RPO, or whatever it is that you do, they let you know where the eyes of the defenders are going, especially the conflict defenders. Okay, outside linebackers, safeties, they have to play run and pass, because they're conflict defenders. How can I take advantage of that? Personnel matchups, good and bad. You know, hopefully you at least have one good, and you ride that thing out all night. And then technique changes. What are they doing technically against you guys that you can change in blocking schemes, or maybe you have different plays that take advantage of that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, if you'd like more information, I've already mentioned, you can find me at fbcoachsimpson.com or shoot me an email. Uh, this is coming out of my gun to RPO systems. If you like what you're hearing specifically about what I'm doing, you can, you're welcome to go do some more research on that system. It's on my website and on Coach2. If you haven't done so already, you can subscribe by just clicking down below. Appreciate your time.